Mr. Cam Cole. Let's have a little chat about your guitar, which it looks brand new. Obviously, you just got it from a company yesterday, a 2019 brand. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> it's um, yeah, yeah, a lot of people have actually asked me about my guitar, especially online. Uh, so it's about time I kind of told people about it. Um, and every time at a gig, someone, people always go, what is that guitar, what is it? Truth is, I don't know. I don't actually know. Uh, it's, a, it's a brand that no one knows. If someone, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you the words that it's got written on it. If anyone out there actually does know anything about those words or those, those, those I guess those once upon a time businesses that, um, that they were, then please get in touch with me. I'd like to know more about it. So this guitar, this guitar is a very unusual guitar. Um, I don't know if you can see, but if I can show you here. The size of that neck is just massive. Just first of all, let's look at the aesthetics of it. It's just massive. It's very old. Um, it's got a bridge like that. If you can see that, am I on the camera lens, yeah? That bridge there, I've never seen a bridge like that. Furthermore, at the top, it's got some, some metal plate that says Gustasia, which I believe is Italian. Um, it's got something in here. I don't know if you can read in there. Can you see the inside there? There's a bit of piece of paper in there. Come forward. See that? Can't see it? Okay, we're in there. There's a little, a really old piece of paper. Yeah, you've got you to you lean it back, actually, to have a look. You've got you to look at it like that at an angle. It's got, a, it's on, on that piece of paper, it's got some guitars, like a, a mandolin and a violin. Um, and it says Torma, which I think is, um, is what is that, Hungarian? Bulgarian. Bulgarian. We think, we think it's Bulgarian, we're not sure, we did some Google searches. Anyways, and also one other thing that's very important to know, someone during its lifetime, if you can see, because I put some stones on it, and I wrapped them on, but if you can see, can you see that, it says 1931? Just there, you got it? It says 1931, someone scratched that in there, either when they were building guitar, or maybe, maybe it's even older than that, and someone just put the, the year that they were playing it on there, I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a very old and very, very magical guitar in my opinion. Um, story from my perspective is, is I, I walked into One Joe Guitars in Denmark Street, which is a very, it's like the Tin Pan Alley of London. Um, doesn't have as much vibe as it used to be, that street. It's losing its vibe because of gentrification. Um, I walked into One Joe Guitars and uh, the guy who owns One Joe Guitars, Brian, met him a few times, he's a really, really lovely guy. Um, he, I, I walked in and I went up the stairs to where a lot of the vintage guitars were, or used to be, they've changed shops so many times. And uh, there's loads of old vintage guitars in the room, and then this one was just sitting there. And the moment I seen it, I was like, whoa, what is that? It looks almost like, just like a giant, like a guitar, it looks like a cello, like an old vintage cello, but it's like a guitar. I could, I could put my finger on it, I was like, that is amazing, the bridge, I was like, what is that, that looks really cool. Everything about it was just like, that's really, really strange. And I, play, I, I, got, I put it in my hands and I played it and the neck is just massive. Like guitars are often built with such a skinny neck so you can get your hands around it, it's easy to play. This is a challenge. It's very hard to play. Furthermore, it goes out of tune as you play it. You, you, you move your hands up the intonation, which is like, the intonation is something to do with the distance between that and that and the 12th fret. Essentially, it means that when you play it, it doesn't go out of tune. This goes out of tune. So the only way to play it is by using a slide, and also the action is fucking high. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, you can't, it'd be very hard to play normally. So when I played it, I was like, oh, this would be amazing for slide. And um, more importantly, it was the sound of it. So when I played it, I was like, I was like, that sounds really deep and heavy. That sounds amazing, you know? Um, fell in love with the sound it made. Um, and I, so I got a bare knuckle pickup put in it. I bought it off him, and it wasn't actually very much money because, because it's not, because it's not like an American branded name like Fender or Gibson, which guitars from the 1930s. If it was a Fender or Gibson, that would be worth thousands and thousands of pounds. I got it for something like 270 or something, or maybe 300 quid around that sort of mark because it's an antique, you know. Um, and he was like, because it's not a make, it's, uh, it's, it's. Yeah, it's, it's not worth that much. It's from Eastern Europe somewhere. He told me, Brian from One Joe Guitars told me, um, some Polish guy walked in to the shop um, and he had this guitar in his hands and he said, I want a Gibson Les Paul. How much 
can I, can I, can I trade this with the Gibson as full? And he traded it. I don't know why that bloke did that. I don't understand why you'd want to trade something that's a complete one of a kind for something that is manufactured. But it's up to him, and I'm glad he did because now I've got it. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very, very original. And as I say, it's the sound. Um, something I've never really come across. I think it's an old jazz guitar, so if you're looking for a similar sound, but lots of people have asked me, how do I get that kind of sound on the, on the guitar? Like, you want something really, really big, massive and chunky, jazz guitars from Europe. Um, and I also detune it to like around B or C. Um, but yeah, who knows where it's been? And um, who knows what its actual story is? Um, but that, that's, 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 that's all I know about it. But yeah, you've, you, as I say, you've got, you've got some really old things there. And on this metal plate, there's some kind of like priest or some kind of like, I don't know, just some, there's something there where it's like a dude who looks like he's, I think, it, yeah, some kind, of, some kind of dude who's like a priest that's been engraved on that metal plate and put on it. It's very, very interesting. And it makes a spooky kind of deep sound, you know? Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I put, a, I put, as I said earlier, I put, a, I put a bare knuckle pickup in it. This is a bare knuckle Stormy Monday pickup in it. It didn't have that. I had that put in with just one volume control to keep that depth. Don't want any treble on that. Um, and yeah, I just run it through like a little valve amp for when recording. I use a little pedal called Box of Rock, uh, which just literally goes through the PA. That sounds exactly the same as a little tweed valve amp. And that, um, it's just more controllable because valve amps on stage, they feed back and they can cause problems. So a little pedal just does the sound, but it doesn't feed back and doesn't give me all that unwanted noise. It's just very clean. Um, I use very, very thick strings, tuned down low to B, and I only use five strings. My tuning is B, F sharp, B, F sharp, and B. Sometimes it'll be, C. I don't, I never know exactly what it is. It's either between C or B, because when I tune it, I just, I just. I just tune it in. So if I get it like that, if it's out of tune, I pick it up and it's out of tune, I just... I just tune it in, whatever it would be. Sometimes it's different on different days, sometimes it's gone out of tune. So it's in between those two, you know? Um, I think that's about it. I think I've covered anything. Is there anything you want to else ask me about my guitar? Or about anything? I do. Go on, then. You said that you don't know where that's been. Mm. Where's it going? Where's it going? I don't know the answer to that either. And I like the mystery. I think that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. Nice one, Cam. Thanks a lot, mate. Nice one, man. <laughs>